Hey everybody, my name is Jacob Quinn, and today I'll be talking about partitions and chains um, and things we've been doing in the data ecosystem to enable batch processing of your data. Um, to start out, we uh, knew we needed to be working with uh, within the core frameworks of the data ecosystem, and that involves tables, where data formats and uh, in-memory table types can talk to each other without um, you know, needing to know about each other. And so um, we introduced the idea of the tables partitions interface function. So this allows source tables to implement um, tables partitions, which says my data naturally has some kind of um, partition in the data. And <clears throat> it allows syncs to then call this function on inputs and get back, um, it's an iterator of tables. So um, it can iterate through the partitions of the input data. One of the design decisions we made uh, with tables partitions is making it backwards compatible. So um, it'll treat a single table input as a single partition. So syncs are free to call tables partitions. Um, they can change the code to use that and deal with partitions. And users can continue to call their sync with a single data frame, for example, and it will just work because um, it'll just be treated as a single partition. Um, we also introduced the idea of a tables partitioner because we knew we wanted a way to kind of lazily gener uh, generate these partitions. Uh, there are certain cases where you have like a directory of CSV files and you want to, um, you know, be able to just say, hey, apply a CSV file to each of these. And those are naturally kind of a, a big partition of, of data that, uh, you know, a sync can then process. So that's tables partitioner um, and tables partitions. We also introduced um, some more convenience operations in dealing with partitions in the table operations package, which is a kind of collection of various utilities that work on generic tables. So um, the first one is make partitions where you can take any valid um, tables table and you can say, hey, I actually want to chunk this up into um, batches or partitions um, with up to N rows. So you give it a number, 100,000 and it will you, you then get back a valid ta uh, a, a partitioned table that you can then iterate the partitions of and each one will be 100,000 rows. So that's um, make partitions. So it's a way to chunk up kind of existing long uh, non-partitioned data and then join partitions. The second function here is actually the inverse. So um, we're actually going to take a partitioned input data set um, and we want to lazily join those, we want to treat them as like one big long table. So um, this, you know, an example here might be if you have a partitioned input data source, it's kind of a collection of CSV files or something like that. And, oh, I actually want to pass that to a data frame and just kind of treat them all as one long, um, you know, one big data frame and do data frame operations on those. So um, I could call join partitions on uh, the source, which, you know, going back to this slide might be a tables partitioner where I've kind of generated those partitions US using CSV file on a you know directory of CSV files. Um, so those are two kind of convenience functions that are introduced that hopefully um, make working with partitions a little easier. Um, and another piece uh, of, of making this work, you know, in join partitions, I said that they lazily append the columns from each partition um, is the idea of this chained vector type. So this is a new, um, abstract vector type that's defined in the Sentinel arrays package. And what it allows you to do is treat a vector of vectors as a single vector. So um, I have a collection of vectors, you know, with different lengths uh, or whatever. They're kind of the different chunks of data, if you will, uh, different chains. And I want to chain them together into one long vector without kind of reallocating and copying and all that. Um, and it turns out you can actually make most of the operations really, really efficient. So um, it doesn't use, it uses a binary search if you're doing random access indexing on the array. Um, but for most operations, if you're iterating, if you're doing, um, you know, map or other uh, operations, it's going to internally uh, optimize those calls so that it's not using the binary search for every single, you know, access of each uh, element. So most of the operations on chain vector are actually very, very fast and, you know, 
as fast as like using a normal array. Um, and it also supports uh, a full suite, you know, the full suite of array operations from base. So anything mutating, push, append, delete, those are all supported. Um, and so this becomes kind of a fundamental data structure that allows a lot of this data partitioning. So uh, for example, uh, here's a couple of packages that are using uh, the, these new functions, new functionality. So um, CSV uses chain vector in CSV file. So when you parse a function um, using multiple threads, each thread kind of takes a different chunk of the file and parses it and it's reading those columns. And then at the end, when it's done reading the entire file, it'll actually chain those together lazily without reallocating or copying it, you know, the data that each thread parsed into chained vector columns. So you get a chained vector per column that you parse in the CSV file. Um, similarly with Arrow and Parquet and Avro, um, each of those data formats has kind of a natural partitioned kind of uh, representation in their data format. And so, we can use chained vector to say, hey, if there are multiple record batches or blocks or whatever it is in this data format, we're going to treat those as one big column without needing to, you know, reallocate data and, and copy things all over the place. We want to do this as efficiently as possible when we're reading data. And so chained vector is the data structure that allows us to do that really efficiently. Um, CSV also has, uh, just to highlight the other things here, CSV also has CSV chunks, which allows you to give it a single file, and then it will operate, it'll process that single file in chunks. So kind of taking a single CSV file and, you know, turning it into partitions, if you will. Um, and then CSV write actually also supports writing partitions. So if you have a partitioned input, you can actually tell it to um, write out separate files for each partition. And that might be easier if you're you know, sending the data to another data framework or whatever, where dealing with one huge you know, CSV file is not as efficient as dealing with like not lots of many kind of smaller CSV files that all have the same schema. Um, similarly with arrow write and Avro write, uh, write table, um, they support taking input partition data sets and writing them out in the natural data format uh, for those. So as record batches for arrow and as blocks for Avro and it supports compression and all that. So kind of cool to see this uh, functionality kind of come about in the data ecosystem. Um, this is kind of a small thing we've been working on that is enabling you know, more efficient workflows out there. And if you have any issues or, or questions, we'd love to you know, address those. Feel free to you know, follow my blog there. Um, I, I post regular updates on this stuff or go ping me on Twitter. I'm always happy to discuss things and you know, talk about data in Julia. So thank you very much. We'll see you around at JuliaCon. Thanks.